Welcome back to another Astro 310 video. In today's video, we're going to be visualizing an orbit using our classical orbital elements, or COEs. By the end, you should be able to visualize the characteristics of an orbit and identify where the satellite is in that orbit with respect to a particular coordinate frame. So what do we mean by orbital characteristics? We might ask you several questions. We might ask you, is the orbit circular or elliptical? Is it equatorial, polar, prograde, retrograde? Is this satellite at apogee, perigee? Is it over the north or south pole? Is the spacecraft on the I, J, or K axis? Is it at the ascending or descending node? And while this might all seem uh, very overwhelming at first to ask you all these different particular parameters, what you'll find is by using a combination of whiz wheel, drawing pictures, and using definitions, you can answer these questions just going through them one at a time. So let's talk about the kinds of orbital characteristics that you can determine solely based on the definition. Um, and the first is, is the orbit circular or elliptical? Circular orbits, by definition, have an eccentricity value of zero. Elliptical orbits have values between zero and one. Equatorial or polar orbits? Equatorial orbits have an inclination of zero or 180 degrees, meaning the entirety of the orbit is spent in that equatorial plane, hence the definition equatorial. A polar orbit orbits over the poles and it's going to have an inclination of 90 degrees by definition. Prograde or retrograde, those are two terms that you may not have heard yet, but prograde basically means that the spacecraft is traveling in the same direction as the Earth's rotation. And prograde orbits, by definition, have inclination values between zero and 90 degrees. Retrograde orbits, um, have spacecraft motion against Earth's rotation and have uh, inclinations of between 90 and 180 degrees. I could also ask you, is the spacecraft at perigee or apogee? Well, by definition, since the true anomaly is measured as the angle between the E vector and which points to perigee and the R vector, which points to our satellite current position, if that angle between those two things is zero, I must be, at def by definition, at perigee. Um, and also, if uh, that true anomaly is 180 degrees, I must be at apogee. So all of these are questions that you can answer just based on the definitions that you know. This is what a box problem, is what we would call it, uh, might look like, where I give you several different classical orbital elements over on the left, and then I ask you to check different boxes. Is the orbit circular, equatorial, prograde, retrograde, etc.? All the ones that are boxed here in green are ones that I, can, that I told you you can just basically determine based on definition alone. These red ones, however, are something that you might want to use some sort of visualization tool to aid your understanding and kind of be able to imagine where the spacecraft actually is. Um, and those are namely, is it over the north or south pole? The I, J, or K axis questions. Um, and then the ascending and descending node. Uh, so for this, let's consider an example. And so we're going to kind of walk through this one first. Um, so I might give you particular uh, COEs, such as shown here on the left, as 7,000 for semi major axis, 0.1 for E, uh, inclination of 30 degrees, a right ascension of the sending node of 45 degrees, argument of perigee of 90 degrees, and a true anomaly of 90 degrees. Um, and looking for the, to answer those kind of boxed red questions of north-south pole, IJK axis, etc. Um, what, what would that look like? So to imagine what this orbit would actually look like and what the spacecraft's position in that orbit would actually look like, I actually like to start with um, visualizing uh, the right ascension of the sending node. So as you remember, the right ascension of the sending node is the angle between I and N. So I points to the first point of Aries, N points to the ascending node. So a uh, right ascension of ascending node uh, angular difference of 45 degrees would look something like this, wherein the ascending node must be in the equatorial plane and is shown here as this little red dot. So that must be the spacecraft's ascending node. Next, I like to think about the inclination. So if we have a 30 degree inclination, that means our orbital plane is 30 degrees inclined from the actual uh, equatorial plane, which might look something like this. So an inclination of 30 degrees is going to look something like this. And since we know that the line of nodes, the end vector, the ascending node is pointing here, the descending node must be 180 degrees from that in the equatorial plane as well. Here's what our spacecraft must do. So you can actually almost start to imagine what the orbit would look like. The, the only problem that you don't know right now is where is perigee exactly? And for that, we look at the argument of perigee. So for the argument of perigee, it's going to be the angle between N and E. In this case, it's 90 degrees. So the angle between N and E must be 90 degrees, and therefore perigee of our orbit must be um, along this line here. So here you can actually start to imagine what our orbit would look like. You can imagine the spacecraft is, is going in this direction, basically passes the equatorial plane here, passes back through the equatorial plane, goes underneath, and comes back around. 
Great, so now we have our orbit pictured and visualized. Uh, the last thing we need is to picture where our satellite is, and that's the angle between E and R. In this case, it's 90 degrees, so the angle between E and R, that means our spacecraft must be sitting right here, which is on the equatorial plane, um, and also at the descending node. So we could ask you questions. Is the spacecraft over the north or south pole? No, it's not. Is the spacecraft on the I, J, or K ax axis? No, that's not. The, the I axis is here, the J axis is here, and K is going straight up to the North Pole. It's not there. Is it at the ascending descending node? Yes, it is. It's actually at the descending node. Excellent. So now I'm going to show you what you might actually do if you were given this problem and you wanted to draw a picture. All right, so here we have the same exact... Uh, COEs that we discussed as before, but this might be what you would see on an exam. And here's an example of how you might go about sketching this uh, particular um, orbit. So here we go. We've got AE, I, uh, omega, omega, nu, just as before. So to begin with, what we do is we start out and we draw a coordinate frame. So this is going to be in the IJK frame. So essentially I'm drawing a three-dimensional vector here. Dot, 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 dot. Up, where this is i, j, and k. And to begin with, just as before, uh, we're going to sketch um, our right ascension and ascending node first. And so that's an angle of 45 degrees. And I know that's the, uh, the difference between essentially the i and the n vectors. Well, the n vector is going to be here. How do I know that it's there? It's because this angle here has got to be 45 degrees. So 45 degrees for RAN looks something like that. And so since our ascending node is going to be along that end vector, I go ahead and I just write this is my ascending node. So that's where my ascending node. So that's where we're going to be the essentially where our satellite is going to pass between the equatorial plane and the orbital plane, and the equatorial plane. So we also know, as a consequence, that our descending node has to be back here. Okay, excellent. Next, we have to imagine what our um, actual inclination is going to be. And for that, I like to kind of just sketch an image like this. I is actually in between the H and the K vector, since the K vector is normal to the equatorial plane and the um, H vector is normal to the orbital plane that angle is going to be the same as the angle between the equatorial and orbital plane down here as well. So uh, I'm going to write that as I is 30 degrees. So we already know, hey, this is where our satellite's going to be along this plane. Now, we, we would be done, except for we need to know where perigee is at. So for that last piece, we're going to sketch where perigee might be at. And here, we've got our perigee at 90 degrees. So we're going to go ahead and sketch that here. So that's the angle between N and E. And that's going to be along this orbital plane, which is going to be inclined 30 degrees. So it will look something like this. So this is where essentially E is going to be pointing. Here's where that angle would be. So like that. And so that means that our right ascension ascending node is 90 degrees. Looks something like this. And so now we're actually done because we know that perigee has to be here. Here's where our ascending and descending node have to be. And so that means that apogee is going to be down below. And I'm going to sketch this in red just, just so it looks a little bit more distinct. But it looks something like that. And it's going to go through here, go down below, and come back up here. And granted, it's not perfect, but you kind of get the idea. Here's the satellite. It's going around here. It's going to go down below the equatorial plane here and come back up over here. So pokes right up, goes back down. You kind of get the idea. All right, lastly, we've got our, um, our true anomaly of 90 degrees, and that's going to be measured between E and R. And here it might be a little bit difficult to imagine, but this is actually an angle of 90 degrees. So a true anomaly of 90 degrees would mean that our satellite is currently at this position. So I kind of draw a circle with two rectangles, solar panels. There's our satellite. So, our so, so our, here's where is our satellite is current position. So when we're answering our questions, is it on the i, j, or k axis? Nope, here's the i, j, and k axis. It's not there. Is it uh, over the north or south pole? Well, you know, a little pro tip here is that, uh, that that can only happen if our inclination is 90 degrees. So that's definitely not going to happen in our case. But it is at the descending node. So descending node, check. All right. 
All right, so what happens if you don't like really like drawing, you don't feel like you're that much of an artist, it's difficult still to see. Uh, the whiz wheel is a really powerful visualization tool. And so here I'm going to show you what this same orbit would look like using the whiz wheel. So again, same orbit, same COEs. Um, so we can't picture the A and the E just as before with the drawing. We're going to have to kind of imagine. We know it's an elliptical orbit, so we're going to imagine that's what it looks like. So to begin with, um, our orbit is going to look like this on the whiz wheel. So this is our what I like to call our orbital egg. And so this is where our orbit is going to be. Uh, so to begin with, we're going to go ahead and, and do our same order of uh, operations here. We're going to look at the right ascension ascending node as 45 degrees. Make sure everything's aligned up. The end vector points to I. And so since we're moving our uh, right ascension descending node, we're going to move 45 degrees. How do I know that I've moved 45 degrees? I look right here. So this 45 degrees here says that my ascending node is pointing at this angle of 45 degrees. So now I'm in the correct position. All right, next up, we have an inclination of 30 degrees. So I move my inclination approximately 30 degrees. Those inclination marks are marked here. I'm going to move somewhere between 0 and 45 and just kind of hold it there. So that's essentially what my inclination would look like. Next, I have my argument of perigee being 90 degrees. And again, that's the angle between N and E. So here's our E vector. Here's our N vector. I'm going to move 30, sorry, 90 degrees. So we've moved 90 degrees. So that's what my orbit looks like currently. And lastly, I have a true anomaly of 90 degrees. So a true anomaly of 90 degrees, this one I just kind of use my finger and I start at E and I go 90 degrees. How do I know I've gone 90 degrees? I'm looking at these numbers here. So 45 degrees, or sorry, the, the argument of perigee of 90 degrees is measured here. And the true anomaly degrees are measured here. So this is where my spacecraft is currently sitting. So this is what my orbit looks like. So I just kind of hold my thumb there. And then I can answer questions. So am I over the I, J, or K axis? No, the I axis goes straight along here. So no, I'm not there. What about the J axis? The J runs basically from this J all the way through the center brad, which is kind of akin, akin to our Earth, all the way out here. So no, I'm not over the J axis. The K axis, you have to imagine, just comes straight up. It's the cross product of the I and J, goes straight up to the North Pole, so no, I'm not there. Am I at the ascending or descending node? Yeah, actually I am at the descending node because I'm 180 degrees away from the end vector, so I'm sitting right at the descending node. So that's how you would visualize what this orbit would look like uh, using the whiz wheel. Hopefully you can find one or more of these methods that uh, suit your fancy and, uh, and you'll use that to uh, successfully navigate these COE box problems. Here's a few more things to keep in mind while you're using other methods to visualize your orbit, such as the whiz wheel or the drawing. Um, notably, the spacecraft, um, it can only be over the north or south pole if it's a polar orbit. Um, also, if the spacecraft um, is on the k-axis, realize that the k-axis points to the north pole and negative k would point towards the south pole. And then um, the n vector, students always forget this, but the n vector points to the ascending node, so just remember that. So uh, hopefully today's video helped you to be able to visualize the characteristics of your orbit and help you to identify where that satellite is so that when we ask you questions about it, you can be able to answer those. So thanks, and we'll see you next time. All right, hello and welcome. Uh, I'm Major Cunningham from the Astro Department, and I just wanted to put together a quick video uh, just doing some practice uh, of these what we call box problems. Uh, so I've got this exercise, which I'd be happy to provide, and, and all your instructors should be able to provide this to you. Uh, just as an exercise to kind of get better at this before the next GR. Okay, so I'm going to start off with number one. I'm just going to work my way down through this first page here. Hopefully this gives you a good idea of what we're up to. Okay, so the first problem here says that my semi-major axis is 8,500 kilometers. My eccentricity is 0.1. My inclination is 45 degrees. RAN is 0. Argument of perigee is 180. And true anomaly is 0 degrees. And then you have all these boxes. <clears throat> and so it's like, well, we just want you to tell us about the orbit and, you know, what is true about this orbit and not everything will apply. So here's how I typically do this. I always start off here by drawing a circle. Ooh, that's a good circle. And I draw the middle of the circle. And then I draw an arrow out to the side. Turns out this is the nodal vector, or the line of nodes. Points from the middle of the Earth, starts at the middle of the Earth, and points out towards this point 
which is the ascending node. And remember, that's where a spacecraft, if our orbital motion is going like this, this is where the spacecraft crosses from being over the southern hemisphere to being over the northern hemisphere up here. Now, what I want you to remember first of all is this is what I would call the orbit view. This is not the side of the Earth, no. This is, if I were to look perpendicularly right down or sideways, edge on to how the orbit is. Uh, and that's important because this is, if this were just the Earth, the side view of the Earth, then you know, these would be the North and South Pole. That's not the case. This is just, just the orbit itself, kind of irrespective of the Earth. Okay, so the first thing I can say is that being told my center major axis is 8,500 kilometers, that's not that helpful. Not for these box problems. It is for lots of other problems, not for these box problems. Okay, eccentricity of point one. First of all, do we know if it's circular or not? Of course, first thing we remember is that eccentricity of zero would be a perfectly circular orbit. It's not, though. It's bigger than zero. So I'm going to go ahead and cross out circular. It's not circular. All right, that's about all that eccentricity can tell us. Inclination. So inclination will be able to tell us several things here. At the very least, these four. First of all, for an equatorial orbit, inclination would have to be 0 or 180. But we see that it's 45, not 0, 180. Prograde would be an inclination between 0 and 90. So is that the case that we find ourselves in? Yeah, it looks like it. 45 degrees is definitely between 0 and 90, so I'm going to go ahead and kind of fill in that box. Now, if an orbit is prograde, it can't also at the same time be retrograde because retrograde would be an inclination of 90. Oops. Between 90, I should say, and 180. Now, it can't be exactly 90. We're going to talk about that in a second. So, but anyway, inclination of 45 is not between 90 and 180. So let's cross this off. For a polar orbit, inclination would have to be exactly 90. Is it exactly 90? No, it's not. So we know it's not in a polar orbit. So all we know so far is that we have a prograde orbit that's not circular. It's elliptical. Okay, now for the rest of these, we've got to go to our picture. Let's go to the video. Let's go to the picture. Okay, <clears throat> I drew my circle, and I drew my nodes, my line of nodes out to the ascending node. This is how you're going to start every picture. Ta -da! Right, this is how you're going to start every single picture for box problems, if you want to do things my way. Okay, so the next thing you're going to do is ask yourself, okay, what is argument of perigee? Okay, argument of perigee is 180 in this case. So I'm going to trace out... 180 degrees worth of argument of perigee. How do I know that's 180? Oh, it's just, I mean, it's half a circle. I didn't draw it perfectly, but it's half a circle. Okay, so maybe I should just uh, make some steps here. Draw a circle. Two. Draw n vector out to ascending node. Okay, now trace out however much your argument of perigee is. All right, so that catches us up. Step four, you're going to draw the eccentricity vector. And remember that points to perigee. Now you guys will remember that perigee is the closest point of an orbit to the Earth. We know that this does in fact have a perigee because inclination is point, or sorry, the eccentricity is point 0.1. Okay, so let's draw our E vector. You draw it basically touching the argument of perigee. And you can label that E vector. Okay, this is perigee, so we're going to label perigee. And again, this is just for this orbit, but. Okay, then. Starting off at perigee, measuring around the direction of spacecraft motion to get to the spacecraft, that's what true anomaly is. So five, trace out true anomaly to find spacecraft location. 
So this first problem presents us with an interesting issue. Our uh, true anomaly is zero, so that means I don't trace out anything from perigee. My spacecraft is right here. Okay, so let's go back to our boxes and see what this can tell us. Okay, first things first. Is the spacecraft at perigee? Yes, it is. Uh, and the reason I, I zeroed in on this random one right here is because we literally just found the spacecraft is at perigee. Now, the good thing about it being at perigee is it can't also be at apogee, which would be the other side here, so we can cross that off. Each one of these usually means that another one can't at the same time be true, which is kind of the convenient thing here. Okay, so how about ascending nodes versus descending nodes? We'll just kind of work our way up. Uh, we establish the ascending node over here on the right always, because that's just how we draw the picture. It's how we start the picture off, is by drawing this line of nodes out to the ascending node. Well, our satellite's on the opposite side, literally 180 degrees away from the ascending node. That's going to tell us that we're at the descending node. And if you want, you can label that, right? DN. If it's at the descending node, it cannot also be at the same time at the ascending node. That's helpful. Okay, now let's think about k-hat. Um, k-hat, I'll put little hats on these. K-hat is uh, an axis in our IJK coordinate frame, remember, that points up through the North Pole and down through the South Pole. Uh, if our orbit is not perfectly polar, like 90 degrees, it can never touch the k-axis. It just never will. It'll never fly up over it or through it. So that means if it's not going to go through k-axis, it is not possible to be at the North Pole or the South Pole. Okay, so we're almost there. We've ruled out almost everything so far. Or rather, we've addressed all of our concerns so far, I should say. Okay, so as far as if the spacecraft is on the I-axis only, or the j-axis only. I draw a top view. Not all of these problems are going to require a top view. But I'm going to draw it out here because this one does require one. So I literally draw like the ice caps, right? We're looking down through the North Pole. Like if my pencil were k-hat, that's basically what we're drawing right now. Looking down at the Earth through the North Pole. So k-hat is coming up at the, you know, up out at you towards the camera. When you draw the top view, draw out your eye hat to the right here, and that gives you your starting point for your top view. So the question is RAN at this point. So RAN. RAN is measured from eye hat around, remember now we're looking at the top, looking down at the Earth, so along the equatorial plane, which would be kind of parallel with my Earth here, right, it would be cutting through my Earth. Um, it would look like it's flat, cutting through the earth like a napkin or a piece of paper like that. So you're going to draw your eye hat. And that gives you a, a place from which to measure out RAN. Now, kind of just like our true anomaly was zero, so we didn't have much to do, our RAN is also zero in this problem, so we don't have that much to do. That means that our spacecraft is right there. What this means, what I'm trying to get at is the it's at the ascending node. Um, and it's literally on I axis, right? So J, just for example, J hat is 90 degrees away. However, comma, it is not the case right now. The satellite is over on J hat. It's currently at the ascending node. Let me put it this way. If RAN were 100 degrees, we would start here at I-hat, measure around, and then up here somewhere would be our ascending node, or rather over here. That would mean it's not on I or J. But the problem is literally constructed, so you have to confront this issue. We know that it's at I-hat because RAN is zero. It's, n it's literally not any farther away from I-hat than zero degrees. So... What we know is we can fill in the i-hat box, and we can cross out the j-hat box. Because if it's on i-hat, it cannot also be on j-hat or k-hat. All 
right, that does it for this first problem. All right, let's tackle problem number two. So this one's got some exotic things going on. So again, our semi major axis being 15,000. Nice to know. Whatever. Eccentricity of exactly zero. Oop, alarm bells. Okay, so that means I have a circular orbit. Ha. Ah. Okay, that's all it can tell me for the box problems. Uh, inclination of zero. Ooh, more alarm bells. Okay, so there's a couple things we know. From the last problem, we know that an inclination of exactly zero or 180 would mean equatorial, and we have zero, so that definitely satisfies that. Anything between zero and 90 is also prograde. Well, zero counts, so we'll mark that. If an orbit's prograde, it can't be retrograde, and if it's an equatorial orbit, there's no way it could be a polar orbit, so we'll cross those out. Now we've got some very weird things, right? Uh, RAN is, of course, undefined because, you know, if, if you're always on the equator, that means you're never ascending from the southern hemisphere to over the northern hemisphere. You're just always sitting on the equator, uh, spinning around the Earth. How nice. Okay. And if that means if I don't have RAN, how can I measure argument of perigee? And if I don't have a perigee, uh, because it's perfect circle and every part's equally close to the Earth, so no parity. Well, then how do I measure true anomaly? Okay, well, we address all that with what we call an alternate COE, uh, which is this bad boy uh, argument of longitude. And basically, it starts off at I hat, and we measure it all the way around to uh, where the satellite currently is. So let's draw that. So basically, for this problem, very kind of exotic, we only have the top view. I draw my ice caps, my little K-hat coming out of the board at us. Coming out of the paper, I should say. So let's draw our I-hat right here. Yeah, sorry, this is the Earth. This is the orbit. Okay. Um, you can tell it's the Earth because of that. <laughs> okay. All right, so here's our I-hat pointed out to the right there. Let's trace out basically 180 degrees worth of true longitude, or sorry, argument of longitude. Boom, spacecraft location. That's about as complex as this one gets as far as that goes. So what else can we know? All right, going back to our boxes, if we have an equatorial orbit, that means the satellite can never ever pass over the k-axis which goes through north and south pole. So we'll cross those out. Can I be at perigee or apogee if my orbit doesn't have a perigee or an apogee? Right? It's perfectly circular, so no. Can I be at an ascending node or a descending node if I never cross the equator? because my inclination is zero. No, I don't have an ascending node or a descending node. So what we're left with is trying to determine if it's on I-axis or J-axis. Well, we kind of found that out with our picture here. Uh, you started off at I-hat and we measure argument of longitude all the way around where the satellite is. So technically, yes, we are on the I-axis. Why? Because, well, technically this is negative I-hat. So in our box problems for our GRs and homeworks, yes, that counts. It is still technically on the I hat axis somewhere. It just happens to be on the negative side. So we can say, yes, it's on I. And since J would be coming out here like this, we can confirm it is not on J. Oop. Cool, that about takes care of problem number two. All right, let's tackle problem number three. Again, seven major axis being 7,000. How nice, Blah, cross that out. Okay, eccentricity of 0.4. Uh, does that mean we have a circular orbit or an elliptical orbit? Well, we remember from problem one, if we have any uh, eccentricity that's above zero, like anything other than zero, it's not circular. Okay, <clears throat> I equals 90 degrees. Ooh, warning bells, warning bells. That means we have a polar orbit, right? If it's exactly 90, we know we have a polar orbit. 
Now, if it's polar, it cannot be equatorial. It cannot be prograde. It cannot be retrograde. And it is polar. Okay, so this is going to add an interesting uh, problem for us. Uh, just like problem number one, where we had to draw a top view, we're going to have to draw a side view of this orbit, um, or put another way, I'll show you, but we're basically going to do an, a side-on view of the Earth, which is not what we're usually doing. But, okay, so inclination of 90, great. Let's draw our picture as we do. As before... Draw our middle dot there. Draw our nodal vector out to the ascending node, and we're ready to begin, right? This is how we start every single box problem picture, right? Great. Okay, so we're going to trace out 350, 315 degrees worth of argument of perigee. Okay. So there's about 90. There's about 180. There's about 270, oh boy, and then 45 more puts us right here. This is where perigee is going to be in the orbit. Oof. Let me adjust that a little bit, eh? This is our orbit, right? So I'll draw it actually on the orbit like I should. Okay, so there's our perigee is. Starting at perigee, then, we take true anomaly of 135 degrees and uh, trace out 135 degrees worth of true anomaly. So, there's 45. Sorry, it's cutting through my ascending node. There's another 90. This is where the spacecraft is. And that tells us a few things right off the bat. First of all, because this is a polar orbit... When we draw our orbit view, it just so happens to be also an edge-on look at the Earth from the equator, right? So we're actually looking at the spacecraft, you know, this is our direction of spacecraft motion, right? We're watching the spacecraft fly over the North and South Pole if we were to sit, sit here and just watch this orbit. So what does that tell us? Well, because it's this edge-on view of the Earth, essentially, K-hat goes up through the North Pole, Negative k-hat goes down through the South Pole, right? Turns out our spacecraft literally just flew through, or is currently at, I should say, the k-axis. Because why? Well, there's the South Pole with all the penguins. The satellite just flew over the North Pole, right? Because... If you were to follow K-hat from the center of the Earth all the way up to where the Earth ends, basically, you'll hit North Pole. And you'll see Santa Claus. Okay. So we're going to mark that it's at the North Pole. And if it's at the North Pole, it clearly can't be at the South Pole. If you're with Santa Claus, then you can't see any penguins because they're at the South Pole. Little known fact. What am I, a bio major? I don't know. Okay. Spacecraft on I-axis or J-axis. This is really straightforward. I axis, I hat's coming out here. Ish. Uh, it's tough to, to make it a 3D. You know, it's, it's coming out on the page somewhere. We know that because the spacecraft is up here on K, it's one of those mutual exclusion things. It can't be on I, and it can't be on J either. It's on K. Great. I'm going to draw out my ascending or descending node over here, right? What have we decided about ascending node and descending node? Well, because the spacecraft is up here at the North Pole, it actually couldn't be any farther from the ascending node or the descending node, right? I mean, it's, it's very much not at either of the nodes. It's, you know, it's not heading up and it's not heading down. Rather, it's flying straight across the North Pole. So I guess what I'm trying to say is we can get rid of both of those. If I could only draw a straight line, these would be great. Okay, apogee and perigee. Oh, so we've got to work that out. So essentially what we're looking at here is we haven't even, uh, I take it back, uh, we, we can do this without drawing anymore, I take it back. Um, I need to be confident, I take it back. Uh, perigee is down here, spacecraft is not at it. 
over here would be apogee because it's 180 degrees away from parity, right? Everything has the, you know, evil twin. Ace ain't no decent ain't no North Pole, South Pole. Apogee, perigee. Perigee, apogee. Um, spacecraft is not at either one. So we can definitely cross those off. And voila, we're done again. Just that simply. So the polar case of an orbit, not, not all that tough. Definitely doable, right? All right, let's go ahead and tackle problem number four. Okay, semi-major axis of 26,000. You guys know what I'm going to say. Doesn't tell us much for this problem. Let's look at eccentricity being 0.7. Does that tell us we have a circular or an elliptical orbit? Well, anything, again, bigger than zero means it's not perfectly circular. So <clears throat> we can get rid of that. Inclination of 63.4. Hmm, that does not indicate equatorial to me because it would need to be zero or 180 for equatorial it does indicate prograde right because we know it's between zero and 90 it and if it's prograde it can't be retrograde inclination right and unless the satellite is in an inclination of 90 degrees orbit it can't be polar all right so no it's prograde all right so far so good Ran of 90, we'll come back to that. So, let's go to the picture as we do. Alright, you know what we're going to do. We're going to draw this circle. Put our little dot in the middle. You know what it is. You know what it is. Line of nodes, nodal vector pointing out to, you guessed it, the ascending node. And as always, we're going to assume our satellite's going to move in this direction. Cool. Doesn't mean it's down here, by the way. It just means I'm, I'm moving counterclockwise. Okay. So, as always, we're going to start, you know, with the nodal vector as our shelf kind of and bounce off the diving board, trace out however much argument of perigee we have. Turns out we have argument of perigee of 270. So, you know, there's 90, there's 90, and there's another 90. Okay. As before, we're going to use that to basically give ourselves our eccentricity vector, which points to, as you guys recall, perigee, closest point in the orbit to Earth. And now, we're going to use this true anomaly of 90, right? We're going to start at perigee and draw our way around to where the spacecraft currently is. That's about 90 degrees worth. That's exactly 90 degrees worth. It's just only about, because my picture is not quite perfect. But in the end, here's what we have found. Our spacecraft is right here. All right. First things first. Let's just, let's just attack this. If it's at the ascending node, can it be at the North Pole or the South Pole? No. In fact, we already kind of knew that, because we're not in a polar orbit. And if we're not at the North or South Pole, we cannot be on the k-axis. So again, we kind of get to cross off a whole bunch of things right off the bat. Is the spacecraft the ascending node? Heck yeah, it is. Look, it's right there. And if it's at the ascending node, then it can't also at the same time be at the descending node, which would be over here. So we'll go ahead and cross that off. Let's see. Why don't we look at perigee and apogee while we're here? Uh, is it at perigee? Nope, it's 90 degrees away from perigee. And apogee is up here, right? 180 degrees away from perigee. It's not at apogee either. It's not perigee or apogee. So, see you later. All right. Being on the i-axis or the j-axis. Okay, so first of all, we would have to be at the ascending node or the descending node to even have these be a possibility. Why? Well, the ascending node and the descending node are on the equator. Okay, they're in the plane of the equator. So, the only place where our satellite crosses the equator, or even touches the equator, is the ascending node or the descending node. Okay, well, ding, 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 alarm bells, right? Because we are at the ascending node. So that means we're going to go ahead and have to draw our top view. Ice caps, K-hat coming out at you. Make sure I label here. 
top view of the earth. Okay, so our orbit is basically coming out. Uh, let's see, let me take that back. Our orbit, here's our I hat. Nine degrees away is J hat. That's just I hat and J hat looking down, right? Okay, ran of 90 means we're going to start at I hat, trace out 90 degrees worth of ran. So what that's telling us is that the spacecraft being at the ascending node, that means it's somewhere around here on the equator, but it's in a very special place because it is 90 degrees away from I hat. So not only is it at the ascending node, the ascending node happens to be on the J axis. And if it's on J, you can clearly see it's not on I. All right, and we've done problem four. All right, let's tackle problem number five. All right, our seven major axis of 7,000. That doesn't do much for us with box problems. Just go ahead and cross that out. Who cares? Okay, here we go. Eccentricity of zero. That's something fun. Okay, so that's going to tell us we have a circular orbit, right? Great. Inclination of 98 degrees. Ah, oh, if it was 90, we'd know it was polar, but it's not quite 90, so it's not polar. And since it's not zero, we know it's not equatorial. If it was between 0 and 90, remember, it would be prograde, but it's not. It is instead retrograde, right, because it's between 90 and 180. Cool. All right, because it's not polar, again, because it's not polar, we know we can cross out it being at the north or south pole. And because the north and south poles are on the k-axis, we know it's not on the k-axis either. All right, the dominoes keep falling. This is good. Let's go to the picture now. Problem number four. Orbit view. Start in the middle. Draw our middle vector out to the ascending node. All right. Now, we've already encountered a problem, right? Because what we usually do is trace out our argument of perigee. Undefined, because we have no perigee, which means that true anomaly is undefined. Oh, brother. Okay. Well, no problem. We have this thing called argument of latitude, and we abbreviate it with a U. Who, me? Yes, you. Ha, ha, ha. Uh, we are, uh, argument of latitude, for some reason, is abbreviated with a, a U. And we kind of use that in the same way that we use true longitude. But basically, U, we start off at the ascending node. So I'll kind of draw our stuff out here. And we draw ourselves around. To where the spacecraft is located. Spacecraft is here. So we know it's over here at the descending node. First things first. That's a nice thing to know, right? Because it's 180 degrees away from the ascending node. So not at ascending, is at descending. Cool. Okay. I axis and J axis. Well, alarm bell should be going off because we know that we could only be on I or J if we were at a node because that's where the satellite crosses over the equator. So we are on the equator. We're at the des descending node. Hmm. That means we're going to have to do a top view. And use RAN. All right, so we'll draw our I hat out this way. And J hat is 90 degrees away, as always. And K hat's coming out of the paper at you. So, starting at I hat, tracing out around 100, 
35 degrees worth of ran. Well, that tells us that although the spacecraft is at the descending node, that descending node is not on I-hat or J-hat, right? So we can thankfully cross those out. Now here's kind of a tricky thing. Because we don't have an argument of perigee, we can't have perigee and we can't have apogee. Well, that takes care of number five.